Today, we'll take a look into our new Biamp integration. In a rack far, far away in the server room, there sits a Biamp Tessera DSP. So it's not on the table today, but a DSP is a digital signal processor. And such devices, they are typically very, very flexible. They work by setting up different blocks and setting routes between them. And with the waveboard from Skahoy, you can control every tiny little detail of the DSP and configure everything in less time with more user satisfaction and a higher return on investment. Of course you can't. It's a stupid idea, it won't work. It's not even close to the use case. With the WaveBot, you can break out the specific operational control you desire to a tactile fader, a button, a knob on the panel, and that won't scare your users away, but make them feel confident in controlling whatever matters to them and what you allow them to. That is our mission, period. WaveBot is therefore the essential part to take Biamp the last step into your user-friendly conference room control or whatever it might be. This is the software that is used to configure the DSP. As you can see, it's obviously something you want a graphical user interface to do for you. So these are all the blocks, right? This is the input channels. This is a peak meter. We'll use that in a moment. And it it is uh, going into filters and stages, and I don't know what. I don't know these details, but it's kind of easy from this software to imagine how the audio is flowing through the blocks, right? The blocks of interest to us would be the level block right here, the peak meters as well, because those are some of those essential controls you want to break out on the waveboard to give your users confidence in controlling only what matters to them and to you. So uh, yeah, this is the DSP. Uh, a little lower down, I want to show you something that will make the waveboard look more operational to us, because the waveboard right here is Skahoy's primary audio control surface. We have a waveboard mini as well. You can basically extend this. You can connect them together to have more or less channels, whatever you want. So we also have four channels on, on the waveboard mini. But these uh, motorized faders, you can see they are operating the levels of the level block I've chosen to show graphically in the software. I can also mute these by these buttons. And it's kind of it. This is what we can do, except we can also show you metering on these. I'll show you that in a moment because you see it on the outputs over here and you also um, see it. We have it for you for some USB inputs we have added as well. So there are VU meters for every channel. So it's basically a fader, VU metering for feedback and also a button for uh, muting the channel. Up here we have displays that show you the labels. So wherever we can, we are actually taking labels out of the Tessera. And uh, that is what is shown up here. It says channel one, two, three, four. And that is the labels you see right there. Well, then we have receiver one and two, and we have trans one and two over here. That is also shown there. So again, these faders are adjusting those values you see in here. Let's try to change the values there. And you can see the fader is moving along as well on the waveboard. So yes, of course, we have full uh, duplex. We have data coming from the system to inform our fader and vice versa. So um, that that's essential for you to understand. Now, I want to show you how this is configured because having this super flexible system still requires a little bit of the waveboard to make sure that you map the right things down onto it. But we're trying to make it simple. Fader, VU meters for confidence monitoring, and also muting. All right. Now, um, the software that runs the waveboard, and I tell you, this runs inside the waveboard. The waveboard is independent. It doesn't need the computer you're looking at right here. It is talking directly to the to the BIAM to zero. And therefore, it is, um, uh, and this is the configuration interface it has. It runs straight out of the IP address of the waveboard. So first of all, the device to zero is added over here. We can add more devices, so you can have any number you want. Each of them would have an IP address. In this case, it is 10.129. And if I open this one up, you can see there are different settings, like how is the connection type password, etc. Naming device ID is a reference that we also see in a list in a moment. Uh, we could have different models. There's one called Auto Tessera here, and um, maybe I'll touch upon that at the end. And um, then you can make a description, etc. Okay, so that's setting up the device. But you may be interested in knowing how can these two, basically three pages of audio control be mapped. And that happens in the channel configuration. So if we look inside of this one, you see this list 
is essentially the channels that is mapped onto the wave board. And they are automatically mapped down onto these channels. So I tell you, if, if we open this one up and we picked one that is called uh, WaveBot plus WaveBot Mini, generic audio control, we would basically have more of them, like uh, 12 channels of direct faders, and we would have, have eight buttons for audio banks. That's for a different video, but just so you know that we have extensible extensibility, modularity built into our concept. These channels, we first have eight level blocks. The level blocks uh, are all from device ID one, makes sense. Everything is from device ID number one, but that, that's actually how another Tessera um, connected in here would be possible to mix and match any way you want. You would just pick a different device ID, point it over to, to, uh, to the one that you want to control. Then we pick the audio channel and you see these level blocks. There's one here, there's one over here. And then if I scroll, we see one there and there as well. So we have four level blocks. Some of them have four channels and some have two channels back to reactor. And uh, those are the channels that we are picking right there. So for one level block, I have channel one, two, three, four. Then I have channel one and two, one and two. Because of the complex complexity of this, we have some additional configuration you need to attend to. This is hidden inside this button, config. So if I click this one, you'll see that there's an instance ID. And this instance ID is what basically tells us if it's this block or if it's this block, or if it is this block over here that we are controlling. So if I click on the level block, you see down here it says instance tag level one. Very tiny description, level two. Okay, so that's my level ID. So in other words, this is level number one. And you have to know that because that's the number you insert here. The metering instance ID is a reference to the peak meters, those blocks that you see here, here, and uh, probably down here. So for each of these channels, you'll see there's a reference to the meter instance ID. So in a similar way, you need to, to know which meter is it that you want to pair with your, um, your control. And then you have the metering channel because it may not be the same channel number as your audio channel set out here. So if we go back to the audio channel, that's audio channel number one, you might want to pick up metering for, from channel three somewhere else. Ta -da! Yeah, that's a lot to keep, you know, to, to balance out. But I'm sure you, as the guy who sets this up, know by this, by now, knowing by amp, Tessera and how that works, you know exactly what this means. So those are the things that you'll you'll basically put in here. I, I want to show you a cool little thing. You can easily swap channels around and you'll see faders and channel um, functionality is just swapped around. So it's really like easy to configure the interface like that. And if we move down, we can see other things than the input blocks because that's what I focused on right now for this demo, the, the level blocks over here. We have uh, a, a VB input blocks, which is uh, some Ethernet audio, as I'm told. We have output blocks. And um, if we open up this dialog, you can basically see the list. So here you can see that we have input, output, uh, input microphone, output from Dante, input level, blah, blah, blah. Again, you owning a BiAmp Tessera will know what this means. And you can imagine that the same configuration would apply to those combining fader, muting, and metering into, into one combined thing here. Because the DSPs are so flexible, we needed to build in a way to reflect that in the parameters. Now it becomes just slightly technical, but for those of you who are interested, if you get the uh, parameter list by opening up the device call uh, editing here, then this list of parameters basically tells you what we can control in the device. So it was not entirely untrue that we can control every tiny little detail of the DSP. It is not true. I mean, we have not implemented every parameter, but we have implemented a lot. And many of these are actually available for those, the most adventurous of you who want to go into that, you can actually uh, take these parameters, study this list, see that we can do uh, things on, on more um, aspects of, of the uh, DSP than, uh, than has been covered in, in, in this video, basically. So I'll leave that over to you essentially. But right now, the, my point is that if you open this from within Reactor, having already connected to uh, the current Tessera we are connected to, reading back which uh, level blocks exist and so on, that is actually informing the parameters that are available to you in here. So Reactor kind of knows already from this list uh, what, it, it, um, what it can expect. But if you go to devicesskahoy.com and if you search up um, Tessera, like uh, here, this one, then you will essentially see that these lists 
are far more modest. Uh, they basically say empty, and that is because they are they are flexible. They are gonna get their content as they are connected to a t an actual Tessera system. But devicesscarhoy.com, great place to also study all the other device cores we have. And don't forget, which you might already have figured out, that inside this list, it kind of is implicitly obvious that there are many other audio devices that you could also pick configurations from. So from in within the same reactor instance on the same panel, you could also mix in control of a Yamaha audio mixes or bearing our vmix audio from broadcast, uh, Atom audio, Prodigy MP from um, direct out, etc. So all these different things, mix and match, mix and match, it's just built in, it's easy, it's just a matter of what you pick down here and the devices you add over there. Thanks for watching this video. Please like and subscribe to stay updated and connect with us on social media. We love to hear from our loyal and dedicated users for any sort of feedback on how you think we can ease your use of technology in live production.